I'm Liz Smith from Breezy Ridge Farm, where our family maintains a Rito Foundation flock. We have been Rito breeders since 1990. Rito sheep require a whole new approach to sheep production with improved and systematic management. This video will help introduce producers to the use of this new Rito production system, which has been developed since the breed's release, to most effectively use the Rito used to maximum advantage. The key is to be systematic in your production system. We will explore different production systems to give producers alternative choices to find one that best suits their own situation. We will cover breeding, feeding, lambing, health, systems for feeding, handling, and housing. The Rito breed is truly a Canadian success story, bred and developed by Agriculture Canada. This breeding project that started in 1959 and ended 30 years later, concentrated on the removal of seasonal constraints to breeding, decreasing the lambing interval, increasing litter size, and optimizing the efficiency of growth of the market lamb. The Rito is a registered breed and is the first breed of sheep ever to be developed using strictly measured production standards designed to optimize its use in crossbreeding. The result was the production of a composite breed of sheep which will give a high economic return under intensive and sustained lamb production. The Rito breed was developed to be early maturing with a long breeding season. This allows producers the flexibility to select a production system best suited to the family and farm production needs. Whether they choose an annual system or an accelerated system of three lambings in two years, or an advanced system of five times in three years. Choose the dates that best work for your family, your farm operation, and when you want to market lambs. Be consistent year after year around those dates, and only leave the rams with the ewes for a maximum of 30 days. A marking harness is good to know if the ram is working properly. After breeding, have a secure ram holding area where the rams are kept away from the ewes until needed again. This will help ensure a successful accelerated system. The accelerated system will produce more lambs weaned per productive ewe and will also help better spread out the use of your facilities and labor, providing a more even cash flow from your operation. To efficiently increase breeding during the March to August period, synchronize the ewes with either Cedars and PMSG or MGA and PMSG. The ewes will also need to be kept on a rising plane of nutrition during this period to improve the body condition score for more successful breeding and better lamb health. At around 60 days, it helps to ultrasound the ewes to tell if they are pregnant so they can be separated and fed differently than the open ewes. Mm -hmm. 
Ewe lambs should be bred at 6 to 10 months of age to lamb between 12 to 15 months of age at the latest. The economic benefit derived from early lambing results from the shorter interval days between lambings during the life of the ewes. Pure Rito lambs make an acceptable carcass with strong loins and low fat cover. This can further be improved by using terminal sires such as the Suffolk, Texel, Charlet, or other terminal breeds to produce a higher yielding carcass while still keeping the fat at an acceptable level for the buyers. The Rito is highly prolific, with triplets being the most common type of birth, followed by twins, and then quads or more. They need to be fed correspondingly, with a high energy diet coupled with sufficient protein at the proper stages of production, resulting in body condition scoring between 2.5 and 3.5. Higher energy and protein are required in late gestation to help produce a high quality colostrum, reasonable birth weights, and viable lambs. Work with a feed management consultant who can properly advise you on a feeding plan. It's also important to keep an eye on the body condition of the rams to improve their semen quality allowing them to be as effective when turned out to the ewes as possible. Most Rito ewes have the ability to raise triplets while their extra lambs are artificially raised on milk replacer. Barn raised lambs make their fastest gains in the first 50 days, so they need to be started with a high protein 22% starter ration with a coccidiostat added. Other medications can be added in as well if needed. Wean the lambs when the group's average age is around 55 days so that the ewes have time to recover quickly to be rebred in an accelerated breeding program. You may choose to raise lambs on pasture in spring to reduce your cost of production and in this case it is recommended not to leave more than two lambs on the ewe with the extra lambs being artificially reared. For optimal results, rotationally graze paddocks of a high quality forage while moving the sheep from area to area every two days. Lambs raised on pasture will have a slower weight gain than the barn raised lambs, so don't wean until the average age of the group is 65 days old. Transitioning these lambs off grass to a full grain ration may not always be easy, but using a high fiber transition pellet with palatable forage can work well to achieve a smooth change. This is when it is particularly good to have your feed management consultant working with you well ahead of time before weaning the lambs. After weaning, lambs should be fed a finishing ration of either a whole grain and concentrate pellet to make a grower of 16% protein or a ration incorporating corn silage at no more than 25% dry matter basis. Both these ration plans work well, but the solid ration does take 25% longer time to finish the lambs. Your lamb market and timing of marketing can determine on how aggressively you feed your lamb. When raising ewe lambs intended for replacement use, they need to be taken off of full feed between 70 to 80 pounds and moved to limited grain feeding and good quality forage. This will help 
these replacement females not develop too much internal fat in their udder, which causes lower milk production. Sheep have been lambing for millennia on their own and it's important to let them get on with it without interference if possible. The Rito ewes are highly maternal and are bred to have a heightened sense of this maternal instinct. The key to an efficient lambing period with large numbers of ewes expecting multiple births is lambing pen management. After lambs have been dropped, you can move the ewe and her lambs into a 4 by 5 foot pen. The sheep only need to be in a pen until the lambs are processed through your individual system. Processing can include lamb identification by ear tagging, tail docking, and preventative medication administration such as selenium and Baycox. Twins should be in the lambing pens with their mothers for no more than 12 hours. Triplets may need up to 24 hours depending on their birth weights and quads and quintuplets require 48 hours until you have made the selection on which lambs will be artificially reared. Freshen the pens daily by removing the afterbirth and adding fresh bedding. Any excess lambs under 2 kilograms or 5 pounds weight should be reared artificially as larger lambs in the litter will push them aside in the competition for their mother's milk. The ewes with their lambs can then be turned out from the lambing pens to a large group pen with 25 to 35 square foot per ewe. The Rito ewes are excellent mothers and can handle the pressure of large groups. Do not do the turnout at the end of the day because it can lead to lost lambs. At 10 days into your lambing season, you should have the lamb starter feed available to the lambs in a separate area. You should start the lambs on a high protein, high energy starter ration with a coccidia control and later slowly transition them from the starter to a 16% grower ration by 60 days of age. With these large pens, it is necessary to walk the pens at least twice a day for the first couple of weeks and if you find any lambs that are cold and weak and not making the transition well, then those lambs can be reared artificially and will generally go on to prosper quite well. If you are in doubt of the lamb's health condition, a rectal thermometer can be used to check the temperature to see if it is hypothermic. Hypothermic lambs should be given 50 ml of body temperature colostrum, colostrum substitute or milk replacer by tube before heating and afterwards 100 ml at body temperature before being put into the artificial rearing area. Hypothermic lambs can be warmed in a simple homemade warming box using a small handheld hair dryer as a source of heat. Place the lamb on an elevated wire grid to allow the warm air to circulate on all sides. It may take half to three quarters of an hour to raise their temperature, but check them regularly to make sure they don't overheat. You can use an automatic milk dispenser machine. Or a pail feeder, depending on the size of your operation. This is a proven system with good economic returns.
It can take some time at the beginning of the process to get some lambs started on the machine, but if the lambs are healthy and have no underlying medical conditions, then they're off to the races. Tetracycline is advised to be used when weaning lambs off the milk replacer for a better transition. Consulting with your veterinarian and following a protocol will greatly lower your mortality of orphaned lambs. Having a health protocol for your flock can be one of the most profitable and least cost ways to maximize the number of marketed lambs from your Rito ewes. They produce high numbers of lambs, so it can be very helpful to sit down with an experienced large animal veterinarian to make a plan that you can carry out year after year, adjusting it as you gain experience. A veterinarian with knowledge in accelerated sheep systems can be especially helpful in outlining when and how your yearly calendar is laid out keeping in mind the critical importance of vaccinations and other preventative medications, as well as other health maintenance routines in a timely schedule for the year. This will help to keep the death loss down, capitalizing on the advantage of having prolific Rito use. Your protocol needs to be a simple but effective one that you can manage to follow year after year to improve your flock profitability. The handling of sheep on surface seems a minor concern and therefore is so often overlooked. But for an accelerated flock, this is the linchpin that ties the system together. It's important to have a dedicated covered area that is easily accessible from all parts of your operation. This will make it easier for you to do things in a timely way to improve the health of your flock and help you make decisions around breeding, feeding, and health. This allows for an easier and less stressful time at shearing. For rapid pregnancy scanning. for the easy weighing of lambs for better marketing decisions and for faster handling of sheep during health events such as using cedars for breeding vaccinating and countless other tasks Sharing is an essential task and the wool has very little economic value. It should best be done about three weeks before the winter or spring lambings. If using an outside feed yard for the dry use, the sheep should be in full fleece during the coldest months of the year to give good protection from the elements. Lambs very rarely ever need to be sheared as they grow fast and are off to market before their fleece is too long.
One of the most popular ways to deliver food to the bunk is a total mix ration system, also referred to as TMR. This is a combination of silage and dry forages and other homegrown feeds with all the nutrients added to the mix and delivered daily. This system can be justified in flocks of 350 ewes or more as long as costs are kept in check. Another alternative system uses dry hay, baleage, and self-feeding hay feeders that are filled every couple of days. Wastage of feed in the system can be an issue, but is directly proportional to the quality of the hay fed. Combine this with grain feeders for daily feeding. This system works well for flocks of 350 ewes or less. Market lambs can be fed on a balanced whole grain and concentrate 16% protein diet delivered to the feeders using a stationary flex auger system. Also have good quality hay available free choice. Lambs have the fastest gains with this type of system while requiring very little labor. Pasturing dry ewes and also ewes with lambs at their side in an accelerated system is a very low cost way of feeding sheep but can also have its challenges. By using electric fence to manage the sheep and livestock guardian dogs to help reduce predation, you can solve these challenges. Parasite loads can be a big issue that you may need to consult about with your veterinarian. There is a program underway to breed the Ritos to be resistant to parasites that has already made great strides. This Ontario program is replicating the success that has already been achieved with parasite resistant sheep in Australia and New Zealand. High quality pasturing has been shown to produce over 19,000 pounds of dry matter per year per acre and competes well with harvested forage. Rotating sheep through your pasture on a two to three day rotation keeps the forage fresh and the quality high, helping to maintain a good body condition score on ewes and produce excellent feed for growing lambs and milking ewes. Properly done rotational pasturing returns ewes to each particular area no sooner than every 30 days. It usually takes longer in dry times of the year. Choose a system that works well for your finances, your family and your farm. Rito sheep are very flexible, so housing can vary from full confinement systems to using outside yards for dry use throughout the year.
Most farms use covered sheds of some type, but converted hog barns with slatted floors will work extremely well. The most important time to protect the ewes is during lambing and especially in the cold months as this is when losses of lambs can be the highest due to hypothermia. The most effective buildings may incorporate an insulated lambing area where the temperature can be kept even and above freezing until after the lambs are born and stabilized and then they can be moved into colder but draft free areas. Design your feeding system to be complementary to your available housing unless you're able to build new to suit your choice of feeding system. Also keep in mind the easy movement of your sheep to handling areas so that it is simple to get them there to do health preventative work in a timely fashion. Concrete is not necessary in sheep housing and it may be a detriment to health by holding moisture in the environment that can lead to other problems. If you have housing with concrete, make sure you are bedding often to keep the area dry and frequently clean it. The use of existing buildings that were designed for other types of livestock can work out quite well, but may need modification with ventilation to make them effective and healthy for your flock. Sheep need lots of clean fresh air to prevent lung problems. Contact your local agriculture office to find an engineer to help you with ideas for modifications to improve ventilation. A sand floored sheep barn can be very handy to make a building multi-purpose. The barn can be set up for lambing time or readjusted when the lambs are being grown out for market by simply driving temporary posts in wherever you need to set up a feeding area, lambing jugs, or divider panels. The Ontario Sheep Marketing Agency commissioned a benchmarking study that highlighted that the three key components to profitability were using prolific ewes, using an accelerated lambing system, and incorporating some pasture grazing into that system. The economic reality of agriculture today requires your farm system to be productive, profitable, and efficient. This Rito Accelerated System is a successful Canadian design system to help producers sell two or more market-ready lambs per ewe per year in a sustainable way that also allows for good animal health and welfare. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video outlining a proven system for managing and profiting from Rito sheep. We hope that you have found it helpful and will return to view this video again and again to pick up more pointers as you expand your flock and your skills as a modern sheep producer.